Hello dear friends of the folded sheet, my name is Tevin, this is Tevin's Origami and you're watching the How to Origami basic instructions video. Here I'll show you how to choose your paper, where to get it and some neat folding tricks that will improve your origami results greatly but are not mentioned in most books and videos. So if that's not what you're looking for but some basic instructions of simple models, go here. That's a playlist of some of my instructional videos that are easy to do and good for beginners. And everyone else, let's grab a sheet and let's get right at it. So, for origami we need obviously paper and the best choice is the paper you have, of course. Because if you first need to get something you might end up not folding at all, which is the best, worst decision you could make. So, ordinary printer paper is actually a pretty good choice. It has a thickness about 80 grams per square meter. Some packages say it, this one is German, discard the other words, but they're grams per square meter. And standard weight of paper is that. So you can get colored paper, printer paper, or ca you can just use what you probably already have at home at your own printer. And the only thing you need to do is to make it into a square. And there are several ways, but the simplest one I discovered was folding it diagonally like this. So this edge touches this edge and then fold here. You can either now use a pair of scissors or fold sharply use your nail for example and now if you have use a ruler or simply pull and you have a nice square okay what I actually like to use is paper that is origami paper like this Japanese one I can't tell you the brand but I have different brands. I, I tried a lot of them. What um, I like Koma, I like uh, more expensive ones like Bashi which is handmade paper. But it's really a matter of taste. For example when we compare those two kinds of paper here you have a really nice shiny finish and it's nice and thin and strong. What the most important part is what you should try is simply make one crease and look how well it keeps the crease when you do like this. Okay, when it's like a roof on its own and stands on its own it's good for folding. For example this tissue here is not good for folding because let's fold it in half like this and try to make the roof you see not much of a roof there so it can't hold the crease well and same goes for toilet paper or other tissues mostly they're m more difficult to fold so and those are dual colored sheets you see with a white back side and a colored front there are a lot of designs you could have this one is similar from the strength of the paper with the difference that it's the same color on both sides and it feels different. It's a little more crisp to fold. So how do you choose between all of them? I think for learning a new model and just uh, trying out, if it's not too complicated, you can use this one because the rule is the more layers you have to fold on top of each other, the more creases you want to make it on the same place, on the same spot. The thinner the paper needs to be because the layers add up, obviously, so you need thinner and nicer paper. For all the videos in my easy playlist, printer paper is perfectly fine and also the smaller it gets, the harder it gets to fold usually. So 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters, which is this size, which is standard size for origami paper. Uh, those sizes here, what you get when you cut off the strip of an A4 sheet, which is standard size everywhere but America. 
but also US letter size is all right. It's good. You can buy larger sheets like this one, but they tend to bulk around. And so I recommend for beginners, use ordinary printer paper. And if you want to fold more, buy simple Kami paper. What I like to use is those blue boxes that you can buy on online usually. I go and buy them online because here in Germany not a lot of shops sell them. This is I think Toyo or Koma paper but I will give you an annotation or I will show the text and for example you can buy them on origamishop.com. I don't get any money from them for mentioning them the good fact is um, it's a trusted person from the origami com uh, community, Nicholas Terry, who runs the shop and he ships everywhere in the world. So I know that you can buy there for sure and I can recommend it wholeheartedly, even though I never ordered there myself yet because I have other options that are simply cheaper. So that is for how to choose your paper and where to get it. Let's go to the neat folding tricks I promised. So let's clean up the mess here a little. Yeah. So as you so see here, I didn't do this neatly. It's not a perfect square. And if you are really, really accurate, even those sheets of paper I just showed to you are not squares usually. So if you fold a diagonal, you have two options. Either you try to fit the edges together, or what is the better option is to make sure that the line goes from one corner to the other. That's much more important when you're folding diagonals. So, like this. And if you look closely, here you can see there is some paper left over. This is because it's not a perfect square. And that is all right. For maneuvers like a water bomb base, it's much more important that the corners are connected than the edges align. For aligning edges, there is another good trick. I'll just zoom in a little. It's simpler to fold edge to edge, like this, a raw edge to a raw edge, than it is, for example, to fold a line with a crease here. So what you can do to make your crease more precise is you reverse the fold so you have a new edge and then you can fold edge to edge again in order to receive a much better placed fold that would otherwise have been moved a little. Third rule is try to fold just one layer at a time. So if, for example if I would say we want squ um, quarters everywhere I could just have folded like this both layers together but what happens, because the thickness of the paper is not zero, it's there, it's not a mathematical plane, it will move and those here get out of alignment and one of the creases or even both will not be at the right place. That is why you should fold each layer apart from each other on its own. And the last rule is always fold away from yourself. I often see people complaining about me spinning the paper, which is a reasonable complaint and I should fall slower. But the reason for me always turning around the sheet is to demonstrate good folding techniques. So if I want to fold all four corners in like this, I turn always so I can fold away from myself. Why do I do this? because now I can see the new edge I'm creating and can control the crease much better 
than when I would do it like this, where I only see the paper and not the edge, at least from my point of view. In bird's eye view, it might be all right, but nothing beats having the crease right at your fingertips. So those are the four, five nice small tips and tricks that improve your folding. This was how to origami. And if you want to see more like this, you can subscribe to my channel, which is totally for free, or follow me on Facebook, Google+, take a look at my website, heavensorigami.com, or, and that would make me really happy, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if the video was not so good, and leave me a comment. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.